I would remind members if they wish to ask a, question, a supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister for the Economy to outline how ineligible payments occurred under the coronavirus £10,000 small business support grant scheme, including progress in recovering payments. And I call the Minister for the Economy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I wish to start my response to this question with a reference to the Controller and Auditor General. In his report, he highlighted that 20 Department of Economy initiatives were activated to support local businesses. And as a result of this action, tens of thousands of businesses have been assisted and jobs saved. This would not have happened had the department failed to act quickly. My department launched three grant schemes, the 10K Small Business Grant Scheme, the 25K Small Business Grant, uh, grant Scheme, and the Micro Business Hardship Scheme. A total of 343 million was processed to approximately 32,000 businesses. The 10K Small Business Grant Support Scheme was open to businesses registered as in receipt of small business rate relief. It was later extended to include those in receipt of industrial day rating. This scheme mirrored those being implemented in other parts of the United Kingdom. Every party in the executive agreed there was a need to get payments to businesses as quickly as possible. For that reason, it was agreed that approximately 7,000 automatic payments would be made to those businesses for whom LPS held bank details for rating purposes. The executive took this decision fully cognizant of the risk. To save businesses and jobs, it was simply not possible to put in place the checks and balances that would be associated with schemes of this nature. The scheme was announced on the 18th of March and launched eight days later on the 26th of March. The data used to process these payments is held by LPS. For those businesses for whom LPS did not hold bank details, an online portal was also launched. In my letter to executive colleagues on the 25th of March, I set out that a subsequent audit of the scheme would provide an opportunity to identify payments made in error and consider options for recovery. I remain committed to this today. The eligibility criteria for the scheme included a list of exclusions which included vacant properties, MP and MLA's offices and businesses which were insolvent or dormant. Every effort was undertaken within the time available to ensure automatic payments were only made to eligible businesses. However, I am aware that a number of ineligible payments have issued, representing less than 2% of the 24,700 grants issued. The scheme closed on the 20th of October for appeals. My department is committed to undertake a post-scheme evaluation and will put in place a full process to recover ineligible payments. To date, 74 payments have been recovered in full. I am content that my department took the necessary swift action to support tens of thousands of businesses and jobs under threat caused by the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you, call, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and I call Andrew Muir. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her response. Uh, the revelations exposed last week by the media concerning the grant scheme have caused great anger and concern as people and businesses across Northern Ireland continue to suffer real hardship. Will the Minister commit to commissioning a swift, independent investigation into this matter so we all quickly know what happened, who knew, how the money is going to be recovered? and why we only found out about this scandal last week. Well, first of all, can I uh, inform the Minister that the actual process only closed on the 20th of uh, October. And the reason it was allowed uh, to continue was to allow for appeals within the 10K uh, Small Business Grant Scheme. So it's very important to remember that. I have said and did say um, to uh, my executive colleagues in my letter of the 25th of March, uh, which asked uh, for approval of the scheme, that we would have a full evaluation of the scheme, followed uh, by a process uh, of recovery um, of any payments which were deemed ineligible. 
I think that uh, we will allow the process to continue um, and ensure that those payments that were made in error um, will be recovered um, and uh, that uh, the businesses that did get the money um, were able to continue in businesses. We see of many, many businesses in Northern Ireland by the 10,000 uh, small business uh, grant scheme. And many businesses are here today that would not be here had they not had that type of relief alongside the other national programmes that our government put in place. Um, and many businesses comment uh, on this to me uh, on many, many occasions. I call Gary Middleton. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and, and can I thank the Minister for her answers so far. The Minister will be aware that there was incredible pressure from across this chamber to get the scheme set up in March and money out quickly to businesses. Uh, one member in this chamber told us to rip up the rule book. Another member in this chamber told us to bury bureaucracy. Does the, member, or does the Minister agree that the balance needs to be got in trying to get the money out quickly uh, to those who need it, but also ensuring that it's done in a way that we get to those who are eligible and those who uh, urgently required it? Yes, can I um, thank um, the member uh, for his uh, question and indeed his comments and indeed for reminding this chamber that many people right around this chamber from every single party in this chamber at that time urged us to rip up the rule book, um, bury bureaucracy I think was another phrase that was used um, in order to get money out quickly. The honest answer is that we were in an incredibly difficult situation in a pandemic um, that we uh, had never been in as a nation before. We had been told that businesses had to cease trading and there was a huge concern that many of those businesses would subsequently fail had they not had the support that they did. Um, the executive took a decision, supported by every party in the executive, that um, the, there would be a, a number of automatic payments because this would get money out uh, more quickly to those businesses. Um, and uh, that is where uh, we have seen uh, most of the difficulties. The subsequent um, application process, um, while slower, was certainly open to less risk. Um, and I think we should remember that for subsequent processes in the future. Call Thank you, Minister, for your response so far. Can the Minister tell this Assembly, has she got absolute confidence in her department and the leadership to deliver us with a, a, a healthy economy out of this COVID crisis? Because I am really questioning it at the moment. Well, it doesn't really relate to the question, Mr. Speaker, but of course I will answer the question um, because I think it is very, very relevant. In terms of COVID, the only other department that had the response rate uh, to the Department of Economy was the Department of Health, uh, which you would absolutely expect uh, in a health pandemic. So my department moved very, very quickly, as the Auditor General has uh, indicated in his preliminary report into the executive's um, uh, response to the pandemic so far. My department moved very quickly, and again, as the auditor says, by moving quickly and getting money out quickly, saved many thousands of jobs and thousands of businesses that would otherwise have been in failure. As well as that, of course, my department has been working on skills, on higher education, on further education, um, on improving um, our uh, green, clean energy um, strategy for the future, and of course developing our overall economic strategy for the future. These are incredibly, incredibly difficult times uh, that we are going through, and I am satisfied, and indeed I thank the officials in my department for the response and the work so far. And I also want to place on record in this House, Mr Speaker, because I think it is very, very important, the work of land and property services. And many people across this chamber will have cause to be very grateful for Ian Snowden, who personally rang them time and time again to answer queries for businesses. And I think it is worthwhile putting that on the record today. 
And I call Keeve Archibald. Um, oversight of public uh, spending, uh, spending of public money is something we all must take very seriously, something obviously my party is very aware of since learning of erroneous payments to our offices last week. Um, and there is a need to ensure that money is returned to the public purse. I previously asked the Minister and Permanent Secretary. The member just resume her seat, please. I just want to remind members that every speaker who is on their feet has an entitlement to be heard respectfully. Everybody has an opportunity to make their points in due course. Thank you. Keeve Archibald. I previously asked the Minister and Permanent Secretary at committee about the scale of the ineligible payments. Um, and in response to my written question, the Minister indicated officials were putting in place a process to deal with the ineligible payments. As part of that process, um, can the Minister outline if individuals or businesses who receive their erroneous payments have now been um, notified and asked to repay it? Um, as I have noted in the, in the Chamber uh, already today, the scheme closed on the 20th of October. Uh, we will be writing to everyone that we identify as being uh, ineligible for payment um, and asking them uh, to return that money. It is important that we, also, that we have proper um, accountability for uh, taxpayers' money. And indeed, particularly important at a time like this when so many businesses are suffering and see so many individuals are hurting um, because of the health crisis uh, that we have uh, amidst uh, our communities. So yes, I will, um, and that will be a process that is undertaken. But be aware, um, colleagues in this chamber, we are also currently in response to the four-week uh, restrictions, um, putting together um, another set of grant schemes. There are very limited numbers of officials to actually work on all of these grant schemes at the same time. And I refer you to actually Her Majesty's Treasury, um, which has indicated that the full scale of fraud and error in the job retention scheme may not be known until 2021. Nicole John Stewart. So far, I think one of the most frustrating things for businesses um, hearing this story coming out in the last week or so is the many that have that waited months and months, and some are still waiting, as you alluded to, um, on their appeals being heard as recently as last week. Businesses were contacting me saying that they, they were still waiting on the outcome of those, and I, I do think there'll be a great deal of frustration. Can you just assure us that any appeals that are ongoing at the minute will be heard as quickly as possible um, so that people who are entitled to that can get it? And what legal powers do you have to try and claw back any of those monies that have been paid incorrectly? Um, again, can I thank the member for his question? And yes, I will assure him that appeals uh, will be heard and should be heard as quickly as possible. Those that are still waiting tend to be the most difficult and intricate um, and probably are waiting on uh, further information, etc. Um, and uh, we will uh, ensure that that happens. I do think that that is important. Uh, and I thank the member for highlighting that it is, it is uh, very, very uh, significant. Nicole Stewart Dixon. Um, Mr. Speaker, Minister, thank you for coming to the House today and answering this question. You will appreciate that many people are very angry about the scale of these uh, payments that were made erroneously. And there will be others who will thank you for ripping up the rule book. However, when you ripped up the rule book, did you, did, did you include a very clear statement in those rules which said that anybody who attempts to defraud or is paid erroneously, that that will be recouped and that you have the power to do that recoupment? Well, I want to thank the member for his question, but also to correct him, um, in that I actually never indicated that at any stage that we should rip up the rule book. In actual fact, uh, I indicated um, and uh, cautioned, um, and actually, um, and I brought it with me, um, wrote to my executive colleagues on the 25th before the scheme launched to actually outline the risk that there would be to the scheme. So I'm not in favour of ripping up the rule book. The rule book is there for a very, very good reason. However, what I did do um, on the scheme was include certain exemptions. And those exemptions did include MPs and MLAs, constituency offices. And that was clear from the start. Uh, and they're there alongside businesses that were insolvent or dormant, etc., etc. Um, and uh, therefore, um, yes, I had a very clear set 
uh, of guidelines for those who are operating the scheme. And yes, we will write to those and seek to uh, claw back money that was paid in contravention of the guidelines for the scheme. Nicole Rachel Woods. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answer so far. But I would like to ask, when did the Minister first become aware that there were some payments made to ineligible businesses and people, and by whom was she informed? Again, uh, can I thank the member for her question. Um, since we are now only starting the evaluation of the scheme, um, we had uh, done some preliminary work uh, on uh, those uh, areas where we thought uh, that there may be difficulties with the scheme. Um, and for those who are concerned um, with um, the issue um, around the payment to the wind turbines, um, we did discover, and of course the, the Small Business Rates Release Scheme is a very all-encompassing scheme, um, and perhaps something that maybe members of this uh, um, assembly uh, and maybe members of the Finance Committee in this assembly may wish to examine uh, in further detail, um, where we discovered um, that uh, many uh, of the people who are eligible for small business rate um, are strange, to say the, 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 the least of, of that. So we discovered, for example, that uh, payments had been made through the automatic process to the 52 uh, wind turbines. We later then moved to make those um, um, ineligible for the scheme. Be aware, folks, that we will um, come back at businesses that have not uh, claimed properly um, or businesses who, through no fault of their own, and that was the case with some of the businesses, and we don't want to make people out to be in the wrong where they are not in the wrong. Um, where they received the, the 7,000 automatic payments, uh, but we will uh, be attempting to recover all of the monies uh, that are owed. Call Jim Allister. To give us some indication of the estimation of the number who wrongly received, I have an answer today which says 72 have repaid, and many are still outstanding. And when it comes to repayment, Mr. McHugh told the public uh, a, a radio that uh, he had great difficulty contacting the LP uh, Land and Property Services uh, and getting a process to recover the money. Is the Minister aware of any difficulty from LPS in uh, receiving back payments which should never have been made? I just take the last part of your question first. Um, in that um, my department has um, advised people um, of a, a telephone number at which they can call and make arrangements with the LPS. If there are very specific difficulties, I of course will pass this on uh, to LPS, but uh, the member will be aware that LPS is under the control of the finance minister and this may be a matter that he would wish to take up with him. Um, in, uh, at, at, at present, as we currently know it, and before we've done a full evaluation of the scheme, most of the difficulties lie within the 7,000 automatic payments because the other payments were actually processed, uh, many of them manually and checked manually um, by people uh, from my department. It was a huge, huge undertaking to try to get those grants out in a very short space of time. It's worth reminding members that there were 24,700 grants that went out in an extremely short bit space of time uh, in very, very difficult circumstances. Um, and currently, including uh, the 52 wind turbines, the number stands at just over 400. We call Jerry Carroll. Uh, given that people in my constituency, Minister, are hounded and humiliated uh, to pay back benefits if they are overpaid them, uh, can the Minister explain why is it one rule for those constituents of mine and those who are in and connected to Stormont who don't even need or apply for grants but get them regardless? Um, well, of course, um, what I would remind the, the member is that um, we should try to eliminate uh, fraud and error in all aspects of life, and that includes uh, in the benefit payment system. And I just looked this up the other day, um, that in 2018, the uh, fraud and error in the benefit system amounted to £60 million in Northern Ireland for the one year. So um, I would encourage uh, people um, who are in that situation to uh, 
make that right. I don't uh, approve it in any form of life. Um, what I would say also, though, uh, is that if there were payments made in error, that those people should return those payments. The eligibility criteria is very clear on the website, and we can go and examine that eligibility criteria. People should look at it very carefully, and if they have received a payment in error, then they should return that. I call Claire Sugden. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Minister has today confirmed that at the time of payments she understood the risk. She's also confirmed that her executive colleagues, which made the decision along with the Minister, understood the risk. So, what measures did the Minister put in, race, no, uh, put in place knowing that risk? Did she, for example, issue remittance advice to all those automatic payments, which included a disclaimer to claw back that money should these be paid in error? Thank you uh, for uh, your question. Um, you are absolutely right. I uh, wrote to executive colleagues before this scheme launched on the 25th um, of um, March. I received a response from every party in the executive uh, indicating that even though I had outlined uh, the risk, um, that that risk balanced against the need to get money out very, very quickly in a very difficult situation in order to save jobs and businesses that would have failed um, was a risk uh, that they thought uh, was appropriate uh, in the circumstances. Um, we are now in a situation where we will, the scheme is closed, where we will evaluate the scheme, where we will take the scheme forward. Um, if you got money and you know that you are not entitled to that money, then that money should be paid back. We will be writing to everyone that we are aware of um, in those circumstances, and we will try to seek uh, recovery of that money for the public purse. I call Gordon Dunn. Thank you. The Minister for our answers. I think we all should genuinely recognise how significant the Small Business Grant was. It was paid out from March onwards during what came in as a real shock, and that was the lockdown period. Can the Minister advise uh, on her opinion in relation to, to trying to stop recurrence of this ever happening again uh, on the way forward? Uh, I understand that the system used the ALPS database. And do you see a better system, perhaps, where there's a formal application rather than an automatic system in the future? And again, given the public assurance that this will not reoccur. Can I uh, thank the member for his question? Um, and the question really centres around the issue of the automatic payments. And as I said to the, pre the previous, um, in answer to the previous question, this was a balance. It was a balance about getting money out quickly, balanced against the risk of fraud and error. It was decided by the executive um, that we should use the LPS data system because um, this was a rates-based scheme, and this mirrored all of the schemes that were put in place right across the United Kingdom. This was nothing that we invented new or different. Um, it, it mirrored that. Um, obviously, um, as we uh, are now um, fully cognizant of, um, and which, um, in the haste to get money out, um, we um, used the, the, the database, uh, but that did contain some um, businesses that we may not necessarily think of being as impacted by the COVID pandemic. As soon as we realised that in relation to wind turbines, we moved to exclude them. But again, it was a method of getting stuff out. That was not so much the case with either the 25K scheme or the micro-business hardship scheme. Now, I have stood in this chamber, and I have heard people complain in this chamber about the slowness of those schemes because of the application process. But, of course, that takes away considerable risk from the scheme. So we have to all make choices in what we are doing and in how we conduct our business. So going forward, those application processes are very important, as would be, as I have explained to a number of members in this chamber on a number of occasions, and it still eludes me to this day, would be HMRC um, cooperation in verification of data. I call Daniel Crossan. 
Mr. Speaker. Uh, and first of all, can I welcome back John Stewart to the House after his period of illness? Um, Minister, thank you uh, for the answers to the question so far. Uh, and also, uh, I'll put on record appreciation uh, for the funding given to businesses at this critical time. It has been uh, very, very important to keep them above the water. However, Minister, I am concerned. You have mentioned we uh, will try to get it back. We will ask businesses to return it that shouldn't have got it, or businesses who haven't or shouldn't have got it should return it. But have you actually any power, any enforcement uh, to ensure that this money is returned? Uh, and what are those powers? Well, of course, um, we set out the parameters of the scheme and the eligibility of the scheme. If you have applied and are not eligible, then you are clearly in the wrong, and what you have done is wrong, and therefore we will come after that for payment. I call Rosemary Barton. Thank you. Minister, will you give us a guarantee here this afternoon that the method of automatic payments that you used previously will not be used again when giving out grant schemes? Um, I certainly am not using it, um, and I'm not using it in the grant scheme that is currently uh, the COVID uh, restriction support scheme that is currently underway. Um, and perhaps if members would like an update, that scheme launched late on Wednesday afternoon. We worked very hard to get that out. Part A of that has launched, um, and to date we have around 1,200 applications with many, many more draft applications in the pipeline. Um, and again, and I say to the House because I think we need to be clear, um, this is about the balance that we strike in relation to all of this. Um, and checking data and being able to check um, eligibility criteria is very important in de-risking a scheme, but it does make it slower to administer. So we have to choose. And I call Paul Frew. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, can I ask the Minister, what part in any evaluation will the Minister of Finance play? He's just walked in, his timing is impeccable. And will it also cover the scandalous actions and indeed inactions of Sinn Féin, even in the Minister's own constituency of Upper Ban and also in West Tyrone? And does the Minister think that's what Sinn Féin meant when they said, let's rip up the rule book? Again, I have uh, indicated that most of the problems related to the automatic payments. Um, however, it is absolutely clear and was clear at the very outset of this scheme, the eligibility was clear um, around the scheme, that it was not applicable to MPs and MLAs constituency offices. Anyone who had received that money into their bank account, paid automatically, in error and unasked for, should uh, have returned that money. Um, and should not have been tardy in doing so. Um, however, um, in relation to uh, the, the further schemes, um, as I say, we will have a balance, and we need to strike the balance between getting money out to people who are in awful circumstances because of the restrictions that have been placed upon their daily lives and uh, the balance of risk to the public purse. Um, and the time scale that we can get money to people uh, in order to help them in very difficult circumstances. Thank you. And that concludes this item of business. Could members take a raise for a moment or two, please?